Welcome to this five minute flow state talk break. Today I'm reading an excerpt from the book Atomic Habits by James Clear. This excerpt is always a great reminder that our biggest achievements are often just a result of a simple habit done consistently over a long period of time and that those big audacious goals feel a lot more attainable when we break them down into daily habits. Here it is, James Clear on identity and habits. Your identity emerges out of your habits. You are not born with preset beliefs. Every belief, including those about yourself, is learned and conditioned through experience. More precisely, your habits are how you embody your identity. When you make your bed each day, you embody the identity of an organized person. When you write each day, you embody the identity of a creative person. The more you repeat a behavior, the more you reinforce the identity associated with that behavior. In fact, the word identity was originally derived from the Latin words essentitas which means being, and identitum, which means repeatedly. Your identity is literally your repeated beingness. Whatever your identity is right now, you only believe it because you have proof of it. If you study biology for one hour every night, you have evidence that you are studious. If you go to the gym even when it's snowing, you have evidence that you are committed to fitness. The more evidence you have for a belief, the more strongly you will believe it. Of course, your habits are not the only actions that influence your identity. But by virtue of their frequency, they are usually the most important ones. Each experience in life modifies your self-image, but it's unlikely you would consider yourself a soccer player because you kicked a ball once, or an artist because you scribbled a picture. As you repeat these actions, however, the evidence accumulates and your self-image begins to change. The effect of one-off experiences tend to fade away while the effect of habits gets reinforced with time, which means your habits contribute most of the evidence that shapes your identity. In this way, the process of building habits is actually the process of becoming yourself. This is a gradual evolution. We do not change by snapping our fingers and deciding to be someone entirely new. We change bit by bit, day by day, habit by habit. We are continually undergoing microevolutions of the self. Each habit is like a suggestion. If you finish a book, then perhaps you are the type of person who likes reading. If you go to the gym, then perhaps you are the type of person who likes to exercise. Every action you take is a vote for the type of person you wish to become. No single instance will transform your beliefs, but as the votes build up, so does the evidence of your new identity. This is one reason why meaningful change does not require radical change. Small habits can make a meaningful difference by providing evidence of a new identity. Putting this all together, you can see that habits are a path to changing your identity. The most practical way to change who you are is to change what you do. Each time you practice the violin, you're a musician. Each time you encourage your employees, you're a leader. Each habit not only gets results, but also teaches you something far more important, to trust yourself. You start to believe you can accomplish these things. When the votes mount up and the evidence begins to change, the story you tell yourself begins to change as well. Of course, it works the opposite way too. Every time you choose to perform a bad habit, it's a vote for that identity. The good news is that you don't need to be perfect. In any election, there are going to be votes for both sides. You don't need a unanimous vote to win an election. You just need a majority. It doesn't matter if you cast a few votes for a bad behavior. Your goal is simply to win the majority of the time. New identities require new evidence. So there you have it. It really does do a great job of explaining why habits are so important. And it ties well to what we're trying to do here. 
maybe if we focus every day for a few hours, then maybe we're also the type of people that accomplishes deep, focused, distraction-free work. And that's it for this flow state talk break. What would you like to do next? Do you want to jump back into work with either a 30 or 60 minute session? Do you want to take a break with some ambient nature sounds? Or do you want to listen to another talk break? Choose the video that best suits your mood right now.